Hello and welcome to the Farcast here at Shadron State College. I'm Daniel Binkert with my co-host Alex Helmbrecht. We're joined by Taylor Oz Motherly, our Student Activities Coordinator here at CSC. Taylor, thanks for coming on to the podcast with us. Thanks for having me. Well, great to have you here. Well, we'll get right into some questions for you, and we've got a fair few. So, you might be one of the busiest people on campus, <laughs> certainly for working uh, evenings and weekends, all your responsibilities. Um, this is a two-part question. What are your responsibilities for your job, and how do you manage to stay sane during those long weeks? <laughs> That's a really good question, um, and you're not wrong. I, there's a lot of different responsibilities that fall underneath um, my scope. Um, each one of them requires different things depending on the time of year, and it's it's kind of fun. That's why I really like my job is because there is so many different things that fall under the scope of student activities coordinators. So um, first we got the mentorship, the Eagle Mentorship Program. Sure. Um, I also have a really stellar GA that helps me run that program, and she does all the heavy lifting, and I, <laughs> I get back. the support from the, <laughs> from the back. That's the um, way to do it. Becca Monahan, she's killing it. But, yep, we, we do the Eagle Mentorship Program, which is a really cool program that started a, a few years back. Um, really, Gabby Perez, Morgan Colin, Kim Hernandez, Megan Northrup, they all put a lot of work into getting that developed right. and started. Um, and it's turned into something really cool where, where new freshmen on campus, new transfer students, too, are able to kind of get, get acquainted with campus with peers. Um, just the research shows that um, students are more likely to ask questions, be more vulnerable, more honest with their peers than they would be with a lot of the employees on campus. So um, that's a really fun program that, that, that's been going really well. Um, I also oversee student government, so student senate and campus activities boards. Um, they are always coming up with really cool ideas, and I get to have a fun role of being um, being a part of their ideas and kind of helping them come to fruition what they come up with and, right. and kind of helping them know the scope of campus and how to go about some of those processes, how they should go about making some of those changes. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And Campus Activity Board also is a, is a group um, that encompasses all of the different student organizations on campus. Uh, so that group uh, meets weekly, they put on events, um, and then all of the student organizations obviously all have different roles, functions, things that they want to accomplish on campus. And, and I'm kind of the catch-all for all of those different areas. Like right. if they have a question about a club, about how to make a purchase, about how to put on an event on campus, I'm their go-to person. And, and I'm pretty easy to find. My office is right in the student center. Yeah, yeah with um, a big viewing window too. <laughs> yep. yep, I'm pretty much in a fishbowl over there. So <laughs> Let's see, what else What else do I do? Um, a lot of the big welcome events, homecoming events, stuff like that um, kind of fall under my purview. Um, the app? The app, thank you. Oh, I don't even remember app. what I do. Oh, I do. <laughs> the app, yep. We, uh, we have this really cool app if you don't already have it. It's the CSC Eagle Awards app. Um, you can download it on Google Play or on the App Store, and it tells you every single thing, in theory, um, that's available for students to participate in. And the app is a really great tool because not only does it provide all that information, but um, if students go and they check in on their phone, it's it's time bound and also geo filtered so that way if you show up to the event on time you can check into the event and earn some points and with okay. those points you can buy cool prizes like tvs headphones um a lot of free subway free shirts whatever you want you know so, nice yeah very good yeah so um i know i'm forgetting a few different things but that's that's pretty much the main things that i do oh it's a lot <laughs> <laughs> so does it change um Semester by semester, and then compared to the summertime, yeah. What's what's kind of the flow? Well, I actually haven't experienced the summer in this rule yet. I started okay. um, in late August, about a week before a week of welcome. It just feels <laughs> like it's already been a year and yeah. a half now. <laughs> you right in. Yep, yep. So um, no, it definitely depends on the time of year. It depends on like what kind of events we're having. Obviously, this upcoming week, there's a lot of Martin Luther King events that the DEI committee is putting on, and um, we're having I Hate Winter Weekend coming up next week, too. So we're, our focus is in those areas and also helping students get oriented on campus. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, during homecoming, our focus is a different place, wrapping up before finals, where we're focusing on de-stress efforts and supporting our students to those efforts. 
I, it just really depends on the year. And then hopefully, I'm hoping that during the summertime, we have some time to really look at some processes that we have and, and getting things in place for the 2023, 2024 2024 years. So I'm really looking yeah, forward to it. Right <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> looking forward that's to awesome. kind of having some time to breathe and look at those things. Now, Taylor and Daniel and I are probably old enough to remember you uh, <laughs> pre beard. Uh, so you've been here for a while. Yep. I, I know as a student, but looking solely at your professional career, what have, what have some of your roles been here at CSC? Yeah. So, man, looking back all the way back when I was a student, I didn't eat. I didn't even know what being a professional in higher education was back when I was a student. I just knew that I really liked the college atmosphere and being yeah, around sure. students and being around that energy. So I'm like, man, I'm going to I'm gonna find a job and work here. <laughs> so I started all the way back um, my freshman year in college just as an RA, and that's really how I got introduced to a lot of the, the processes and how how things look on a college campus from a from, from a professional level. And Austin Stevens, shout out to the best boss ever. Well, and Dr. Hart too, um, <laughs> my current boss. <laughs> Love you both. <laughs> um, but he was my boss when I was an RA. And then I kind of followed his footsteps for a, a large part of, of my career. Um, started as uh, ADRL, an assistant director of residence life right out of college, and then became associate director of residence life all with Austin being my boss and kind of teaching me the ropes and stuff. So um, I did that for about, let's see, four years while I got my master's and stuff like that. Um, then took a year off um, abroad um, with a leave of absence and became fluent in Spanish, kind of got to experience a dream that I've always had of living abroad and um, living that life, and then came back and became student activities coordinator. So it was a variety of things, mostly in the housing world. Um, but the beautiful thing about working in student affairs is they all bleed into other areas sure. too, and you get to experience a lot of cool, a lot of cool work. So oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about where you grew up and what uh, what made you want to come and study at CSC. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so I grew up in Crawford, just 25 miles down the road, right. about. Um, and when I first came to CSC, when I initially decided CSC, I was actually a little bit hesitant because it was so close to home. Right. I had a lot of ideas in my head about what CSC was because it was so close to home. And I knew a lot of people that went to went to CSC. Um, so I ended up coming here because of the affordability and the proximity to my to my home and being close to my family. However, like when I got here, my mind like exploded mm -hmm. because I realized quickly like, oh, I don't know everybody that's here. Yeah. Like, there's people from all over the world that's here. And it's so cool because it's like its own own world in a sense where, where the possibilities really are endless. And you can meet people from wherever with backgrounds from whatever, <laughs> you know, that have different interests and make new connections every day. So um, once I actually got here, I studied business and, and I love that and – I got involved in a bunch of different clubs, a bunch of different activities, and I just, it, it made me want to stay. It made me, made me really see CSC in a new light and made me appreciate not only the college, but where I come from, where I came from before. I think like living in rural Nebraska, you can have a lot of, you know, you're not living the city, <laughs> city life. There's, there's different jobs, different resources that there would be in a city, but we we have something really to be proud of here too. Like at CSC and oh, yeah. in the Panhandle of Nebraska, we have something that no place else in the world is the with the people, with the geography, with everything. So I'm super proud to be from from Crawford and to have made Shatter in my home, hopefully for a long time. So yeah, that's great to hear. Yeah. yeah. Now you mentioned connections that, that that you felt as a student, mm -hmm. and now you're kind of on the other side, uh, you know, behind the veil, so to speak, where you're working at creating those connections for our students currently. And so, how important um, are on-campus events at, at creating that sense of community and maybe belongingness for students? And I know you're very intentional how you create those and, and the other events that that happen too. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like people come for an education, but there's also a huge part of campus life, a huge part of student growth that happens outside of the classroom. And I think a lot of that starts at events. Um, and we, uh, we do try to be super intentional and also 
you know, up to speed with what the students are wanting because the students come up with a lot of the ideas of what we do have for events. Obviously, we have um, sp some specific events during specific times of the year where we're like, okay, it's week of welcome. We want to provide a lot of social events so people can get to know each other, get to know um, campus a little bit better, stuff like that. Um, but also we want to be intentional about you know, a lot of different things on campus. For example, um, right now it's the bitter cold of winter, <laughs> right? So yeah. we want to have a little bit of fun with that. So a few years ago, um, me and my dear friend Mariah Nelson, uh, we started I Hate Winter Weekend, which we just kind of embraced the idea of, yeah, sometimes winter is not the most fun fun place to be, and especially here in Nebraska. So yeah. let's have fun with that yeah. and recognize that. And uh, But also like have some fun things offered for students that are summer themed. So that way remember, you know, it's the bitter cold of winter, but summer's coming. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we definitely try to be intentional and it's so important to be able to make those connections for, for new students, but also returning students alike, because if students don't feel a community connections on campus, then what's, what's really keeping you here? Like, obviously your, obviously your education is so important, but if you don't feel community, you're not going to want to stay and live yeah. live someplace for a long time. So, exactly. So that's our goal is to make people feel at home, welcome, loved, cared for while they're here at CSC. Oh, that's great. So over the years, what are some of the student events that uh, have stood out in your mind, whether it was when you were a student <laughs> up to the present? Oh, there's been so many. It's hard to choose. I'm kind of picturing some in my mind over like um, – <laughs> the uh, nearly naked mile stands out, oh, of course. Oh my goodness, <laughs> nearly naked mile. That's a, that's a fun one, and like seeing how it's evolved over the years. Um, no, but some of the, my favorite events are some of the more simple events too. Yeah. Um, one that sticks out this year, and I don't really know why it sticks out, is we had a home run derby um, over at the softball fields earlier this year, and I had so much fun watching the students just crank out home runs <laughs> over the... Yeah. I love baseball and I love sports, so mostly the sports ones you yeah. know, intrigue me more than more than a lot of events. But It's kind of a special atmosphere, whether it's baseball or a softball field. Yeah. If you've got an activity going on there, it's probably a good time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then students just come up with the most creative things. Like this, this upcoming week... Um, we're going to have our si a silent disco. We've had one in the past, and I don't know if you guys know um, what silent discos are, but basically students show up, they get headphones, and then like all the people at the dance have headphones. So when you walk into the dance, it's completely silent. <laughs> but everybody's going and dancing and having a really good time. But from an outsider's perspective, it looks so weird. Yeah, what are they doing? <laughs> like, why are they all dancing? There's no music. But everybody's still listening to music and, and having a good time. Um, no, and uh, I love one of my favorite times of the year is the the beginning of, year, of the year because we always um, have so many events that are like large scale and everybody's just not stressed with homework yet. Yeah. So they're able to be loose and have a little bit of fun. And whether it's like slip and slide, kickball or whatever, or the big carnival that we have every mm -hmm. year, times where we're able to just go and provide free activities out at the state park. Like, yeah. Like, mm, it's just a really special time of the year, and everybody's excited to get to know each other and have a bunch of, a bunch of, I don't know, there's just a bunch of excitement, I think, so yeah, I love that. I, uh, I always like those, those, those pockets of time on a college campus, so like kind of those first few weeks of school, maybe pre-Labor Day, and then that week after Labor Day, yeah. um, are always kind of fun to be on campus. And then I always think April is just the busiest month. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah, it's it like everyone's <laughs> climbing out of their winter cave. <laughs> yep. You probably notice this too. And and then like, oh, there's four events on one day in yep. April. <laughs> April's stressing me out already. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I'm sorry well, to bring it up. <laughs> no, we have spring days coming up, which is one of the traditional, you know, bigger events on campus. They kind of rebooted it a few years ago. Um, it used to be a tradition, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good students. to see it coming yeah. back. Yeah, there was a spell in there. Like when I was a student, we didn't celebrate spring days at all, and then it came back. But um, 
yeah, I've already have like four contracts in the work for that busy for time that week, yeah, or for that week. And the what? one the one that I've seen recently that was a big hit was a bunch of food trucks parked in yeah. the Klein Center lot. I, really I thought like that was that. a really cool idea. Yep, those are uh, that's one of the contracts that we're currently Excellent. just starting. So be on the lookout for some food trucks during spring days. No, I think it's great. It'll be it's fun. It's awesome. Yeah. Now the one I'd like to see, and I think it was I think it was spring days, but I'm not positive. It was um, some. Some of our archival photos that I scanned in from my, uh, in the '60s, where they fenced off an area um, along that main campus walk where the old student center used to be the Klein Center, and they had some uh, what I can, based on the photos, it looks like it was uh, chasing greased greased up pigs. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. So, Taylor, uh, if, if you can uh, get, get get that, uh, uh, maybe not for this year, but you know, in the works for next year. All right, all right. We'll see. <laughs> you know, they used do. to do uh, like a tug of war with like oh, a, that was a big one. Like yeah, a, I'm assuming the, mud, the it, muddy bog of water, <laughs> like a like a rodeo barrel in the middle. Uh, I love that, oh, the water spray. Yeah, it was attached yeah. to. So yeah, no. that was a real dangerous one. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a reason they stopped doing that. Just one. Some liability. So we maybe uh, maybe don't do that one. All right, it made for some cool photos. Um, so you mentioned Student Senate, but what, what's kind of your role with that organization? That is a great question that I've been trying to figure out all year. What is a no. Student Senate? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, no, Student Senate's um, really supposed to be the voice of the students, and they also oversee like a pretty large account on campus, mm-hmm. too. So within those two spheres of thinking they they do a lot of work and my job as an advisor is to kind of help um you know help them make their dreams a reality while also um helping them know the best way to go about things because obviously we have there's students that have all kinds of great ideas and and the thing that we can help with as advisors myself marcus jones kurt kimbacher dr hart um, and Sarah, um, Sarah, sorry, Sarah, I can't remember your last name right now, <laughs> but anyways, uh, we might know a little bit more of the context of, yeah, of you're the history the compass. or, yep. or like what's allowable on campus, some things that the students might not know about. So, um, that's really how I view my role on the campus and really trying to empower them to know like, Hey, you guys are the reason we're all here. Um, we we want to hear what you have to say, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between so so we can make some positive impact on campus. And that's really how I see my role in it. And depending on the ideas, depending on the initiatives, it really affects my day-to-day too. So, yeah, sure. So it's fun to hear their ideas and make, make those connections with those students who are really passionate not only about Senate but about CSC as a whole. Um, I think that's why all the senators, for the most part, become senators in the first place is because they want to see positive change on mm-hmm. campus. And, mm-hmm. and I just really admire those students for, for dedicating their time because it's not an easy role to be a student senator and they don't get paid any extra or they don't, they don't really receive much of anything except for you know being able to make a change and some occasional hate along the way because change doesn't come easy right? yeah, no, yeah sometimes, sometimes. So, everyone loves change yeah <laughs> so, now yeah. Uh, you mentioned the eagle mentor program um, earlier and I, i'd be curious how, how long have we been doing it now and where would you like to see the program go over the next five ten years that's a really great question. Some questions that we've been trying to work out um, as myself and Becca and Dr. Hart are all relatively new to our roles. We've been really right. trying to reimagine the program for something that really fits what our student needs are, what our needs are as an institution, and um, and what that looks like moving forward. So um, we, ha- we have some really good ideas. But I guess to answer your first um, question, it's been going on. <laughs> Back we, a long time ago. I, yeah. I think you were on this committee mm-hmm. with me. We were in this uh, student engagement subcommittee of strategic enrollment management planning. <laughs> um, and there was an idea at some point to get a mentorship program on campus to help support our first year students. And I feel like that was about four years ago, something like that. Yeah, the time kind of runs together. <laughs> yeah, but right. it was, yeah, four or five years ago. Dr. Okay. Hire was still here. Yeah, a peer to peer program. Yeah, and... Um, so we had the test run, right, that first year? We had a test run, and really, I, I believe Megan Northrop was really the 
the main person behind that, along with Gabby Perez. I know Amy Carnahan was part of uh, There's so many people, and that's sure. kind of the part that we've been struggling with this year is um, not by anybody's fault. We've just, there's been a lot of people that have overseen the program within the past mm-hmm. four or five years. So um, where we're really trying to be intentional, like we're, we're bought into this program. We think that it has huge potential mm-hmm. and that it's done great things already in the past. Um, we want to see it continue to to grow and the idea is that students and we realize that not all students are going to want a mentor specifically but for students who might see the value in a in a mentor and a peer mentor and um and be able to utilize that service we want to make it as user friendly and as helpful as possible um for when for their first year but even handing it off for their sophomore year or on to completion of of so how does it work? Um, is it like a, a you come in as a freshman, are you automatically assigned a mentor or do you opt into it? Yeah. And, and what what is the mentor-mentee relationship? Yeah. Yep. So um, this year, or maybe two years ago is when it started, that every single freshman student, every single first-year student um, is assigned a mentor. Okay. And then the, they meet at orientation. There's a meet and greet orientation event where you meet your mentor and kind of understand the program a little bit better. Like we're here to support you, um, like judgment free zone, asking you your questions. Like we'll go to events together, stuff like that. Um, and then as the semester goes on, like students kind of start to find their own communities, their own niches and, um, go from there. Okay. Um, however, in the past, yeah, it started out where only a select like hundred or so were in the program, but now everybody is. Do the, do the That's mentors kind of self-select themselves? They sign up for it yep. and, or yep. are you picking the people out? Yeah, no. Um, yeah, there's a application process, um, just like any job. And I haven't actually been through this process yet because I'm new to my position. New too. thing to learn. But, All right. uh, but uh, we're actually um, working on those applications and advertisements for, for the posting right now. So looking right. forward to a new group because we have a really good group of students that are, that are currently mentors. And I think that they're wanting to return. And, and like I said, wonderful. My, my our the GA that's in charge of that program is is really stellar too. Becca Monahan has been doing a killer job with that. That's excellent. Good. I think that kind of thing can only be a, a positive for future jobs. You know, yeah. if, if, if you're lead, meeting and leading a new employee on the job or being led by somebody who's been through that kind of program, yeah. a little bit more camaraderie at, yeah. at, at the office or whatever the job is. It's huge. Absolutely, yeah. the connections and also kind of. You just get a deeper understanding of what the needs are for the students and being able to address those. I think it's really rounds out our students well. Well, and, and the nice thing is that the needs, the needs for the students in 2023 are going to be different than yeah. the needs for the students in 2033. And so uh, it, it's great to have that learning mechanism already installed so that, you know, it's just you're going to be able to adapt. Yeah, it's 100%. Helpful. Um, so you kind of mentioned it a little bit ago that you fulfilled one of your life goals of, <laughs> yeah. of being able to to live abroad. You lived uh, uh, in South America in an immersion program, right? Yep. And uh, so tell us a little bit about that experience, but then <laughs> talk about how you've translated that, keyword translate, uh, into into Shattered State College. I, I believe you've been instrumental in a new group called Familia yeah. uh, in some of those other aspects. So the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, you know, I started really becoming sure that I wanted to live, live abroad, like, um, a a while ago, maybe like five years ago or something like that. And then, but I was always probably daydreaming during those meetings. we had. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. You wouldn't do that. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) No. Anyways, at some point, I, I really became convicted, like, okay, I'm going to do it. Um, but I was conflicted because I love my job. I loved working for the college, and I didn't want to quit that. Like, I didn't want this part to end because I felt so much purpose and so much value in, in what I do here. Um, so at some point, it's really wild how it all worked out. I learned about a leave of absence and the possibilities with that and with the support of our leadership here on campus and my boss at the time, Austin and and Demersman and a lot of different people who are super supportive and understood the value in and what I could bring back after the year, they said, 
go for it. So I was able to live um, six months abroad, uh, or no, not, it's about 10 months in total, but six months in Paraguay, about a couple of weeks in there, having some vacation time, being able to explore different places in, uh, in South America. I got to go to Bolivia, Brazil. Um, I love Brazil. I'm learning Portuguese right now. Nice. <laughs> um, and then three months in Colombia. Um, I did a few different things down there. I, I worked in an orphanage where all the um, the kids in the orphanage had HIV, so that was a really oh man uh, that was an experience that really helped um, how I viewed the world and um, yeah I really value those kids so much and I I love them so much still like trying to keep in touch with them even to this day and then I I spent three months teaching English in Colombia. Um, but the, t- the principal at the school would always get mad because I was never speaking in English. I was always speaking in Spanish. <laughs> and she's like, you need to speak in English. It doesn't matter if the students don't understand. I'm like, yeah, but I want them, I want to like have a relationship with these students <laughs> and they don't understand me if I speak in English. So, um, but the second part of your question, how I, I brought that back and how it's been so useful in my current job in so many different ways. Like one, I think that I'm able to see the world in such a different way than before I left. Um, I always had like a soft spot for international students and just new people in general coming to town because I'm from here and I want people to have a good time, but I'm able to understand so much better like what it means to be a foreigner because I lived that life. I lived as a foreigner and I know Mm -hmm. how hard it can be. And also living in a place where maybe English isn't your first language. Like Spanish obviously wasn't my first language when I was down there, but and that was hard. I experienced some of like the hardest times of my life while I was living abroad. Now, uh, now I don't mean to interrupt, but no, were, were you fairly fluent in Spanish prior to your trip? I f- I would probably classify myself as like um, a B two, like intermediate, but like um, yeah. So you had pre existing. No, yeah. you didn't. You weren't just a complete fish out of water. No. Okay. <laughs> but. Being able to express some ideas that I really wanted to express, like some of my deeper thoughts or being able to understand some things. And I was started out in Paraguay, which like if you're a Spanish speaker, like Paraguay is a hard place to start (laughs) because um, their form of speaking is so much different than like Mexican Spanish, for example. Like they use words like both and use all those conjugations with that with that pronoun. And then they also have another language called Guarani, and they'd mix Guarani and uh, Spanish to form a language called Hopara. <laughs> yeah, that it sounds was just, tough. Yeah. And I was just trying to listen, and <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I cried a little bit, <laughs> probably, to start oh, off Oh, yeah, and, how could you not? And I fell in a hole, and I got kicked off buses, and I was living in extreme heat like I've never lived in before. So the first, like, couple months of my life down there, I just kept on thinking, like, why did I want to do this <laughs> so bad? Um, but then after after experiencing it and after getting to know, like, my host family and and growing a lot of trust and, and love with my host family, like... It, it became all worth it and the most meaningful experience of my life. For oh, sure. that's excellent. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really grateful. I, and then in Colombia, like, my life took another <laughs> turn. Um, I, I met a girl there that was, that was not an intention whatsoever <laughs> of going down there, but I ended up um, falling in love in Colombia with, with my girlfriend. Um, her name's Karin. And so now I make trips down to Colombia like <laughs> every few months <laughs> to see my lady. That's and awesome. It's really cool. Yep. So um, the idea long term is that, sh- that she moves up here to the United States, but been learning a lot about visa processes and, and how hard that can be. So um, I've really unintentionally became super educated on, <laughs> on visas, on living abroad, on, on a lot of different things. But um it was so random, but I feel like now that's part of my purpose while I'm here. Like, I'm an advisor for the International Club here on campus and and created a group called Familia, like you were mentioning. Mm-hmm. And and the goal is to, to support and to love students where they're at, regardless of where they're at, um, regardless of their language, regardless of their background, regardless of of their accent, anything like that. Like, that doesn't matter. Like, what matters is that you're here and you belong here and we want to make you feel that. So 
Um, well, that's a great mission so, yeah. for any group to have. Yeah. And, and, and um, I, I don't know about others, but personally, I can certainly tell that you had a, a life-changing experience because I knew you and worked with you before you left and then obviously know you and have worked with you when you've come back. And there's like a, you have like a different, you're always confident, but you have a different air of confidence <laughs> about yourself. I don't, I don't know the right way to put it. Maybe more, you have more awareness almost. Yeah. And so it was a great experience for you. And yeah, I'm so thank thankful you. that you're able to have that and, and to bring that back into Shadron is really cool. I mean, it's not every kid from Crawford gets to go <laughs> do that, you know? I think so. about that sometimes. I'm like, man, I chose a weird life, or maybe the weird life chose me, but I'm really grateful for it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So one more question on um, the campus side. Uh, talk about the, is, is it like the, the clothing closet, um, oh, yeah. attire and, and coats and everything for the students? Yeah. Um, so a few years back, um, along my problem, I think a theme amongst a lot of these different topics is I don't, I hate having good ideas, just hang in the good idea sphere. Like I need action with these good ideas because they're so good. So so one day I was having a conversation with my dear friend Channing Johns and he mentioned, oh, it'd be really cool if we could just offer a space where students could like come and grab clothes and maybe a staff or people who have too many clothes or something like that can have a place to donate those clothes and it could be really practical and useful. And I'm like, that's a good idea. (laughs) So we created a space called the Eagle Exchange. We wanted to make it super like um, with no, what's the word I'm looking for? Like we wanted students to feel comfortable going in, not having any kind of shame going in. And we wanted it to be open 24 seven, like no sign in sheet, anything like that. So that way it's just, it's just open. It's just free. It's just a good space. So, um, we created the Eagle exchange. It's on the second floor of Kent hall, um, right there by the breezeway. So it's super accessible for on-campus students. Um, and yeah, the idea is that students go in, they get the clothes that they need. They leave clothes if they want to, too. It's, it's helpful. It's sustainable. So that way you don't have to throw away clothes. It's, it, it checks all the boxes and it's been a lot of fun too, because, yeah. you know, it, our colleagues on this campus want to help students in like practical ways mm-hmm. and whatever kind of ways. And this gives them an opportunity to help, especially students that don't have maybe winter clothes when they're coming from, you know, S- South America or California or someplace where they don't have sure. harsh winters like we have here. It's, they can just go and get a coat and not have to worry about spending a hundred bucks on a coat when they have a hundred dollars that they can spend elsewhere. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's been really cool. I've kind of handed off that, that to when I switched positions to housing and residence life. But now what's really cool is there's a group, a new club on campus called Every Eagle Succeeds and the president's um, Katie Hokey. Um, she's a student here and they want to take that over as well as like help out with some other like sustainability and, like resource resources for students on campus. So it's kind of cool to see Excellent. how the evolution of yeah. it all evolves. And there's, there's people that are like bought into some of the ideas that have formed and it's just cool to see it from like an outside perspective. <laughs> yeah. Well, so if, if someone had something they wanted to donate or many items they wanted to donate, who would they contact for that? Yeah. Right now, it's it's just about ready to hand over to the club Every Eagle Succeeds, okay. I believe. Um, so right now, I believe housing is still the best person, the best people to contact. A lot of donations are received in the housing office, and then we, um, the housing crew, I still want to say I'm part of the housing crew. I, I forever in will be part of least, the housing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> crew, and then um, we'll get it put into the Eagle Exchange, and they kind of maintain it. But. And they, they – the desired items or you know maybe professional attire and clo- yeah. like winter clothes stuff like that yeah i think specifically exactly professional winter clothes okay but practical like day-to-day stuff too just as long as it's yeah. in good condition right you know no oh, that's yeah. a great project yeah what are some things you like to do outside of work you know with all your <laughs> spare time <laughs> yeah no i love i love working out i love sports um i love travel Travel is kind of like a necessary part of my life now, so yeah. get those <laughs> um, get those airline miles, yeah. <laughs> right? I need to apply for a for an airline visa, but um, yeah, you probably should. Yeah, honestly, yeah. <laughs> I was listening more attentively this last time to the to the flight attendants, but 
no, I love spending time with my family. It's a quick drive over to Crawford, and we love to golf and go hiking. and and Great golf course over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really nice for, especially for a town so small. Like, I love my home. Um, but, yeah, I love having people over. Like, I love being around people. This is kind of the theme of my life, I guess, in a lot of areas. Like, I love to be able to help practically, to be able to receive people in my house, to have dinners together, watch sports, just, like, chill out, you know? Like, yeah. Nothing too serious, but do do life as a community. Like that's what I really enjoy doing. And and if I'm around people, I'm open minded. I'll do whatever. <laughs> well, you're in the right job for being around people. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I believe that takes us to our final quick hitting questions for you. Okay. So uh, Taylor, what's one of your favorite sports teams? Oh my gosh. Well, I love pretty much all the Denver sports teams, but uh, there was a <laughs> there was a time in my life where I ended up going to like. 10 Rockies games a year. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel the most loyal to them, but they kind of aren't the best. So I'll say the Rockies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but Nuggets are doing really good this year. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's the first concert you attended? Uh, there's this concert that happens every year in, in Rapid City, Hills Alive. It's like a Christian music festival that happens every year. It's free. It's super cool. A lot of my favorite artists are there. So oh, nice. That was my first one, and I still go every year. <laughs> cool. Yeah. What's the best place to relax on campus? Ooh, definitely not the student center. <laughs> no. Um, my favorite place to relax during the summers specifically is the back porch area of the rangeland complex. Oh, yeah. Because you can go and get some good walks in and then just take a break back there on the back porch. And, like, you can see campus so nice. And But I don't want to tell everybody because now everybody's going to be there. It is. It's, it's the hidden gem. <laughs> it's the best place on campus, I think. Yeah, those Adirondack chairs up there are pretty They're comfy. so nice. Yeah. Just need a uh, stiff, um, non-alcoholic beverage in <laughs> <Yeah>. your set. <laughs> yep. How many times have you been to the top of Sea Hill? Oh, I don't. But too many. I go up there, like, all the time, especially during the summer, probably, like, multiple times a week. I used to, there was a student, Devin Fulton, some of mm-hmm. some people would know Devin. Him and I were good friends, and we'd walk up there. We'd take, like, long walks all the time up in Sea Hill, everywhere in town. So, <laughs> but Nice. No, that's a great place. Yeah. So uh, is there a place on your bucket list that uh, you want to visit and experience that you haven't been to yet? Oh, yeah. If you had to pick one, I suppose, what would it be? Oh, yeah. I've been thinking a lot about Italy lately. Oh. Oh, I've been taking some uh, Italian lessons, too, because why not? (laughs) Yeah, you know, it flows, right? (laughs) No, I think, like, maybe honeymoon someday, Italy would be a good place to go. I've heard it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, good choice. What what about you, Daniel? That's a fun question. Oh, man. You know, I, um, I... Unfortunately, have not gotten uh, past uh, Canada, so yeah, actually that would be fun to get up, you know, like that Vancouver area because I like Pacific Northwest. But if I was going to actually get overseas properly, um, you know, Scotland, anywhere that's got a lot of fog and uh, rocky coastlines, I'd be yeah, happy. Be <laughs> or cool. um, um, Scandinavia, you know, like visit the fjords and that sure. kind of thing. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. What about you, Alex? Uh, I'm like Daniel. I've I've been uh, North America place bound. Um, so I, you know, I've always wanted to go to like Australia. Oh uh, yeah. Um, and I know it's a different country, but New Zealand would be awesome too. I, I remember yeah. growing up watching Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And just like yeah. wow, I need to go there. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it really does. But Italy'd be, I mean, any place. Oh yeah. We can't let my wife listen to this because then she'll <laughs> start setting Just up these open vacations. Open up the travel atlas. Yeah, summer's coming before yeah. we know it. Yeah, <laughs> Brittany, book the tickets. <laughs> See, once they're booked, you know, well, you, you, this you far along, you may as well. <laughs> yeah, you have to do it. Well, thank you so much for joining us, yeah. Taylor. We certainly uh, appreciate having you uh, on the podcast. Yeah, I really appreciate having some time to spend with you guys and yeah. being on the podcast. I so appreciate it. You bet. Thank you.